Following on from the past two episodes and the volume patterns that we looked at in various asset classes, you might feel that assessing volume data properly will be a challenging exercise. However, there's an indicator that can help us. It's called R-Vol, or the Relative Volume Indicator. If you're interested in how this works, then stay tuned. So RVOL, or the Relative Volume Indicator, provides a solution to many of the problems we've been talking about so far in this mini-series. It provides an assessment of the current volume pattern compared to the average volume pattern for that asset that you're looking at. Let's take a look. We've been concentrating quite a lot in past episodes at the challenge of assessing volume data because of the fact that volume typically repeats regular patterns throughout the day. And this means that you can't say if the volume is high or rising, then there's commitment to a price move. And conversely, if the volume is low or falling, then there isn't commitment to a price move. And that's because at certain times of the day, you can be almost guaranteed that volume will always be rising or volume will always be high. And so because of that, when we interpret volume data, we have to compare it to the average volume for that particular asset. And then we can genuinely say if volume is high or rising compared to that average volume pattern, then the commitment of traders to that price move is high. But notice this part of the statement, it's important. Different assets have different patterns as we've seen before. And so whatever technique we use to assess the volume data, we have to make sure that it's comparing the volume with previous volume for that asset that you're considering trading. And then likewise, we can also say if volume is low or falling compared to the average volume patterns for that asset, then commitment of traders to that move is low. So let's now take a look at how the RVOL indicator or the relative volume indicator can help with precisely this assessment. So what we're looking at here is a chart of the FTSE 100 stock index. And the indicator at the bottom here is the standard volume indicator. So this isn't doing any type of comparison with previous volume, it's just the volume as it happened. Now, in a moment, I'm going to overlay the relative volatility indicator, or RVOL. And the key metric here is the number of days that are used for the comparison. So I've been using 22, which represents, in terms of trading days, a full calendar month. But I am aware of other traders who use 5 days or 10 days for their comparison. So let's see how this now looks. So the colour coding here on the bottom indicator represents whether the volume is higher or lower than average. The larger bars in green represent higher than average volume. The medium sized bars in orange represent volume that's approximately the same as previous volume for that time of day. And the small red bars represent below average volume. And the metrics that I'm using as the cutoff are based on a 20% difference. So if it's 20% below normal, it will be red, 20% above normal, and it will be green. So let's now switch over and look at a few specific characteristics of this. So we're now looking at a six day period, and let's perform a simple analysis of the Asian Open on two of those days. So as you can see in the standard volume indicator at the bottom, we've got the typical three peak pattern for the majority of these days. But if you look at the volume for the Asian Open of the first day, you'll see that comparatively to this last day, the sixth day, the volume is very low. And now if you look above at the relative volatility indicator, you will see that this is in red where I'm highlighting now. Now, if we compare that to the volume on day six here, we can see the actual volume was much higher than on day one. And because of that, 
and the fact that this is also larger than the volume on average over the last 22 days, we can see that this appears on the RVOL indicator as green. Let's now take a look at the US session. And again, there was one day here, day three, that experienced really quite low volume for the American session. And so because of that, this appears in red and yellow, as you see here. Whereas on day five, the volume was very high during that session. And so, of course, the relative volume represents that fact. And now looking at the London Open and the London session, which is obviously very important for the FTSE 100, we have the same kind of variance here where day four and day six had very different volumes. But that's represented in the results of the RVOL indicator here and here. But I think the most important point about how the RVOL indicator works was from this first example when we looked at the Asian session. So here, even though the actual absolute volume on day six was quite low compared to the European and the American sessions, the fact that it was still above average means that it gets represented on the RVOL indicator as a peak which is actually higher than the US RVOL value, despite the fact that the absolute volume during this day was higher in the US session than in the Asian. So hopefully that explains how the RVOL indicator operates and how its calculation is performed. What we're going to do in the next two episodes is look at some real examples of using RVOL in order to help us make trading decisions. And in the next episode, I'll be concentrating predominantly on trends and trading ranges and how the RVOL indicator can help us with the interpretation of these. And then in the next episode, we'll repeat some of that, but with a different example which will help me to explain some of the characteristics of the indicator in more detail, but also I'll be looking specifically at breakout volume patterns also. Now, if that next episode is available now, you'll see it appear top right in a moment. Also, if you're not aware of what Darwin X does and what service we provide to traders, you can click on the link just below here and it will take you to a website providing more information about the kind of services that we provide to traders just like you. But that's all we've got time for in this episode. And so until next time, trade safe.